So it's time for an update on the latest release of the Terminal Block Mining Simulation game. Now at first glance, it may not look like there are many differences, but I've done a complete overhaul of the user interface. Specifically, I've fixed a whole bunch of race conditions that occur when you're trying to resize the terminal. And I've also made the game's framing system completely dynamic, so I can resize the terminal to any width, and the frames use a percentage-based system to figure out how wide they should be, and I've fixed a number of bugs where, when you try to resize the window, it would accidentally print uh, some characters from one frame into another one. And I also fixed some race conditions where it was not highlighting the frame correctly. The other thing that I changed is I improved the system for detecting what areas of the screen actually need to be updated. And these difference calculations are now done generically and are done independently in individual frames. So one particular slow running frame will not affect the output of other frames. And each of the frames that you see is isolated to its own thread. Now this was also the case previously in the last release. However, the process for creating the different threads and user interface frames is now completely generic. So now you just have to specify the class that's associated with the frame, and it'll go ahead and create it for you. And there's also a system for adding it to the user interface. And whenever the screen should be updated, all of the user interface frames first write to a local frame buffer. The difference between the current frame and the last frame are then calculated, and then sent via message passing to another dedicated thread that's solely responsible for printing output to the screen. I've also added a help menu overlay that shows up when you press escape. And there's now a few different options for having some control over what you will see on the screen. So for example, I can close the help menu, and I can close the map area, and I can close the inventory, and now all the frames are closed, but I can open back up the map area, and I can open an inventory too, and I can also resize it. I can also move the split from one side to the other. And currently, there are still a few options that are missing, so I'm not yet able to take this horizontal split and change it to a vertical split. Now another huge improvement that's available in this version of the game that was not available in prior versions is that you can see a little bit in the layer below you. So for example here, I can see that there are caves below me. And if I press the X key, now I can start moving down in the Y direction into that cave. And I can go back up with the space key. I also made an update in this version, so if you press the M key to mine a block, and there's no blocks around you, it mines the block that's below you. So this gives you the ability to mine straight down, although you have to mine all the blocks around you first. The other thing that I added in this version is the ability to select items in the inventory. So you can use the up and down arrow keys to select different items. Previously, the only type of block that you could place was the rock block by default, and that was just because you couldn't select things in the inventory. But now, you can place any type of block, as long as you have enough of it in your inventory. I also changed the behavior of mining picks, so you have to select a mining pick in order to actually use it. So by default, if I don't select any mining pick, it'll only mine one block at a time. So if I select a wooden pick, and if I actually had any, it would have mined out to a distance of one. If I select a stone pick, it'll mine out to a distance of 2. And if I select the iron pick, it'll mine out to a distance of 3. And of course, you can also run the game in a pure TTY-based environment. Since a pure TTY environment can only support a limited number of characters, each of the different blocks are represented as the first letter of their class name. And just like before, you can navigate around the 3D world using the same controls. Here's a red area that represents an ore vein. You can even open the help menu in the pure TTY. You can switch between frames using the tab key. Okay, let's go ahead and try and run this game from scratch and do a speed run to try and get all of the items. So we'll first start by going over here and mining some of these stone blocks. We'll get some more stone over here. And now we should get some wood. Get some more wood over here. And we can press the C key to make some stone pickaxes. And we can press tab to go over to the inventory, then down to select the stone pick, then tab again to go back to the map area. And now when we press M, we can mine out to a larger radius, so we can mine blocks faster. So let's mine some of this wood over here. And we need to craft some more pickaxes. Okay, we've got a decent number of pickaxes. And here's another ore vein over here. And now when we press the C key, we can craft metallic iron, and it looks like a ran out of wood, so 
Gotta go get some more of that. All right, now I have the most advanced item in the game, an iron pick. So now I can mine out to a radius of three. Okay, so that completes a review of all of the game mechanics that are currently in the Terminal Block Mining Simulation game. And if you want to play this game, you can go ahead and check it out on GitHub. However, make sure you check the license first, because you're not allowed to play this game unless you become a patron. And if you want to play this game without having to compile it from scratch, you can probably just check one of the releases and run one of the pre-compiled jar files.